I am having a day off and I'm walking around in my sunglasses in the rain and I'm thinking about a complex series of thoughts here. I'm going to see if I can relay them to you. I... I watched an old friend's book being released today. It's called Relationship Agreements by a woman named Ari. And I had talked to her about these ideas a fair bit in the past. And I had always been deeply impressed with her conceptions of rules and formats to engage in relationships with each other, specifically in the ways she was able to talk about many of the problems that I found in the historical nature of how relationships have been presented to me by the culture. You know, the way it seems to be done. And she had these great paradigms and ideas to open up beyond that and through that and into that with people. And it's really quite amazing. It was when I talked to her. And I just started her book because it's, like I say, it's a free download today. But there's a whole Amazon Kindle thing you have to do too. Which is still cool, but it takes a half minute to figure out. <laughs> took me like 15 I guess but if you install Kindle the Kindle app on your phone then you can go and download it but you have to create a Kindle account on Amazon but it's the same as an Amazon password so it's all pretty quick and painless and then I had the book on my phone so I'm reading the book and I'm really quite struck in the first pages by the clarity of Aries language. There's times when you really just feel someone's words, or I, I feel like I do. I just read another great piece. I just fell across it on a Facebook post. It's on my wall now. It's something about um, a woman at war and reclaiming the feminine voice in the culture. Is, yeah, <laughs> it was really powerful. <laughs> um, and so I saw this thing with Ari and I started watching her stuff going on and reading it and I was really quite pleased so far. I've only gotten a little bit of the way into it. And I realized that the other day one of my blog, blogs didn't post and you'll see there's a missing number and that's because it's still processing and has been for days. And I think I deleted the original file, so you're never going to see that video, YouTube, I don't think. I mean, maybe unless some magic happens, but it was me running and reflecting on the audiobook I've been listening to, which is by John Wooden, the former UCLA coach, basketball coach in the 50s and 60s. And he was one of the great basketball coaches of all times. And he changed the game utterly, both strategically well, I should say he changed the game strategically, but he paints a beautiful example of how we affect one another. And the book I'm reading is about mentors and he's relays seven of his mentors and then seven of the people who had been mentored by him. And he, he's sort of talking about himself as a giver and receiver in this cosmic flow of information and energy and life. And it's really, really beautiful. And so I'm looking at Aries stuff come up and remembering the things she said to me and thinking about how much I've learned and grown just from a lot of really sort of informal conversations. I was never trying to learn anything per se, but the way her beliefs and paradigms affected me is really quite amazing, I think. Um, I used to think a lot of things you just couldn't talk about. You know, there are all these like unmet needs and desires that we somehow seem scared to mention. Fantasies and, and uh, angers and 
frustrations and joys and all these different things that we just somehow seem unable to communicate and Ari was one of the first people I feel like I've met that is communicating those things on a really authentic and genuine level um, in a lot of areas of her life. And so I've been reflecting on all this stuff today. And this morning I went to the chiropractor. I'm still relaying my complex series of thoughts as I walk in the rain. This morning I went to the chiropractor and my spine just really, they like put my neck in traction. It feels a bit, a bit intense. It was using machines. And if you know me much at all, you can probably imagine I don't like machines on my body, I like human hands, because they're much smarter machines. <laughs> but all the same, it, it was nice. And I'm, I'm really working with this feeling of elongating and length and stretch in my spine and really starting feeling a differentiation in the organs of my torso and finding a, a sinking or dropping or rooting in some of the intestinal organs, the sexual organs, and then a buoyant rising in heart, lung organs, and then the sort of middle ground, you know, with the liver and pancreas and kidneys and spleen. And I'm just walking, you know. I didn't run today. I have a day off. I went to Manhattan for the appointment, but I'm just resting and decided to walk because it feels good. I guess I'm not really resting. I mean, what I'm really doing is integrating that chiropractic appointment because, you know, machines, it's pretty intense and there's a lot of sort of felt emotional kinesthetic work to do afterwards that's the best way I can explain it it just feels like I need to not exactly rest and not exactly work but some other form of existing in the world in order to integrate um, that the movements that my body endured um, I think I'm sort of painting on some of the way I understand modern trauma theory that we actually integrate our experiences in the world somatically, that is to say the body carries them or holds them, even the specific movements, I think. And that in order to integrate a, a trauma, right, I am essentially calling my chiropractic appointment trauma, but it was chosen trauma and it was trauma that I was, I've gone into willing to, willingly to experiment with and I'm also self-regulating within the session. I'm not handing my body over to just anyone. I'm maintaining the sort of integrity of my beliefs within the session of the chiropractic. Um, if that all makes sense, it, it might not. I, I, I find myself speaking in words sometimes that I'm working to explain an experience I'm having that there really aren't words in the culture to describe, right? It's the way I understand my experience, but there's not a lot of people talking like this, and so there's, it's very hard to talk about those things. Or it's not, actually, but it's hard to do it and fit that into the mainstream cultural paradigm of language. So, this is my series of thoughts, essentially. It's not really completely done, but I think that's good enough for now. Signing off from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, with the sun setting in the rain.